Hello, 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 everyone. You are now live with Dave Jose. Um, I want to say what's up to everybody. I want to thank all you guys for coming on. I've been able to see some amazing, amazing, amazing stuff today. Uh, Josh Barnett is kicking butt all on Twitter, um, across the nation. Candace Taylor is kicking butt. I just got to see some stuff that I can't show y'all. That's probably going to come out soon. And oh my gosh, guys, the bombshell is dropping all over the country. Um, people are super, super, super afraid about people uh, looking over these selections. Um, I didn't see any bad news for the audit. I think the audit is going well. I think everything is great. They got more tables up now in Arizona. Um, a lot of people are saying stuff about what's going on around the nation. Um, but, you know, for me, I see there's more tables right now. They're moving way faster. Um, some people were concerned about uh, one company leaving. I don't think that was a big deal at all because the company's uh, contract was up, as Josh showed yesterday. <clears throat> Not only was their contract up, but they were going too slow. So that was good. Um, I don't know who Hursty is. That's against the audit. You got to let me know who you're talking about. And I, and I want you guys to know what's up, Steve Crane. Shirt look like the same one, Josh. No, this is a Moroso drag racing shirt. Um, I want to say what's up to Lala's Adventure, Cindy, uh, OCN, Joshua. What up? Big chap in the house. Glenna, hey, how's it going? Hey, Lori. Um, but guys, let me tell y'all something real quick. And please share this with everybody. Get everybody uh, on here that's going to come that you know that would want to watch. Um, guys, you got to realize that, you know, I'm I'm really, 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 really different uh, than a lot of people. When you, when you know and you trust God, right, you realize that God does certain things for a reason and he has to do it on his time because he knows how to get it right. We don't usually know how to get stuff right. So we need God to guide our steps. So when God leads me in a certain way, um, I don't get worried about what the other side is doing so much. Um, some people just get worried and thrown off their rocker when something happens, you know, like, oh, this happened in the audit. Oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. I'm like, I don't give a darn, <laughs> right? I don't care about the little theatrics that happen from day to day. Um because I understand the purpose of instructing the government. If the government doesn't do something that we want them to do, we give them notice, we give them affidavits, and we we move them to take action based on what the people want. Uh, not everything, that's right, Take be anxious for nothing, right? We understand that it's our job to lead our government servants, right? And if we see that they're leaning in a way that we don't like, prepare a notice, get everything together and send it in, right? That easy. You know, I don't I don't um, make a show all the time based on how these people move. It really doesn't matter to me how they move. It doesn't matter to me what they want. It doesn't matter to me what they like. It doesn't matter to me what kind of clothes they wear after hours. I don't give a darn. And here's why. The reason why is, is that we control the government. When they get out of line and mess up our, with our rights, we get redress of grievance. When they're going in the wrong direction, we have the power to give them notice. It's really no reason to worry. Now, a lot of people get afraid and scared when something happens. But when you don't realize how you can notice right, and direct the government, you worry about what they do. When you realize you have the power to give notice and affidavits to the government to move them to do what's right. Oh, yeah. Okay. My guess is here. So let's let's see if we can get him on. What's what up, up, Dave? How's it going, sir? Good, good. How are you doing, buddy? Good, good. You are now live. Is it okay if I pray real quick and we get rock and rolling? You can pray with for me, brother. Pray for me. Got let's go. You. Let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this wonderful day. We come thanking you, Father, for a powerful fighter uh, like Robert, who has uh, been involved with the 
the system of fighting corrupt orders with child support and CPS for many years uh, before I even started. Father, we thank you for all the work he's done, Father. We thank you for his eyewitness testimony and the things that he has done. And Father, we thank you for the doors that you have opened through him, Father. Um, we ask that you uh, bless him and help him with everything that he deals with in his life, Father. Give him good health, strength. Uh, give him the ability to continue to fight, Father, and, and, and change lives around the nation. Father, we thank you for allowing him to come on, Father, and give us testimony of those things that he has seen. And Father, we thank you so much, Father, for allowing the work to be documented uh, that others might see your power and your might, Father, that you have uh, used to do works through us that have allowed people to be in good health, safe, their kids back, and, and, and blessings around the nation, Father. So, Father, we just thank you so much for all these things. We thank you for the people who are watching, Father. We ask that you get this message out far and wide. And, Father, we know that the devil will send his little minions, too. And we just thank you, Father, for letting us be able to do things that move and shake the earth and that make Satan uncomfortable. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What's up, what's up, what's up? How you living? Well, good, good. How you living, brother? How you doing over there in the, in the hot country? <laughs> it ain't that bad right now. I think I think I went out a little bit earlier. It was a little cool, actually. I was like, wow. It wasn't it wasn't like a hundred degrees in the morning. So I'm like, man, it probably was like 80, maybe 79, 80. Wasn't that hot at all? It's about about 110 with them affidavits you've been dropping, though, ain't it? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know nothing about that. Affidavits do nothing, man. I mean, I hear yeah, that uh I hear that um, affidavits have no force or effect or nothing. They just, uh, you know, pieces of paper that mean nothing. You know, Stacy Slayton said hi. Hey, Stacy, how are you, girl? I'll be back around. I'm just trying to get healthy again and, and uh, <coughs> get get geared up for the next round of this this whatever it may be. Hey, so Robert, I wanted to ask you. So um, before I got into the law movement and fighting all that stuff, you were already out there fighting and getting work done and and helping families. And you dealt with a lot of what's going on behind the scenes, in front of the scenes and everything in between. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when I. We, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We, we, we um, honestly, at that time, nobody really knew what to do. I mean, every. Everybody was for, trying to form groups and just to help each other. So, yeah, it, it right now is is key time for everything. Uh, so I'm glad to I always pay attention to what you're doing, always. So um, there are just certain people I pay attention to, and um, I, I, I'm I'm so thankful that you know God God led me to you on YouTube somehow, David. Um, <laughs> I had like you know, six followers. And, uh, <laughs> uh, somehow he led me there, man, and uh, I'm thankful for that. So um, I knew from you know the first time that I heard you talking about what you were talking about. Hey, we need we need this guy to um, come in and be a part of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and, and you were more than willing. So I was very grateful for that. When you showed up in DC that first time, I was, I was very honored that, that you showed up. So it meant the world to me, brother. So let me ask you this. So you actually, you actually took part in setting up an event in DC to help parents across the nation. And you invited me after you found me on YouTube, right? I was coming out kind of fresh and new and you took me under your wing and you brought me to like a big platform in DC, kind of like real quick, right? Real quick, yeah. It was it was uh, the best part about it was is you you was a monster when you walked in there and handled it just fine. So I knew you would be able, <laughs> I knew you would be able to, but yeah, I mean it was because you you know I, th I believe at that time you were you were getting mixed messages from from lots of people and and uh things were going on at that time and you know you were even you know questioning whether you should go or not you know mm -hmm. so it was 
it was awesome because when I remember when, he, when you walked in and uh, I said, "Hey, David, there's this uh, this is this federal attorney over here, and I I, I think you're gonna like what he has to say." You remember me saying that to yeah, you? Yeah, the guy with the and black he, hair. Yeah, Ken, and you said, "I kind of like him, Robert." You know what I mean? So that kind of <laughs> that kind of that kind of set the mood for you. So I was glad that that happened that the way it did, and everything. I, I went down, got you some peanut butter crackers, and let you take off, man, and, and <laughs> everything is wrapped. That's what it was. See, you you remember too how I won't eat when I'm trying to teach the people. I feel like it's almost disrespectful. I was in that much shaking. <laughs> right, my, right. my sugar dropped low as heck. And you're like, Dave, what you need, bub? You need some crackers or something? What you need, man, to help you out? I'm like, oh, I need something with sugar in it. I'm falling apart. <laughs> uh, I knew, man. I could see it. It was like, hmm. so, so. I forgot look, about that. You know what's so funny about that was, um, you know, we was in the middle of a ghetto, David. Yeah. And I, I walked out and I started walking down to the, the street where we was at the library. And this this man, he come out and he said, hey, man, what you doing? You going to church? You lost? <laughs> and I said, no, nah, I need to get, where's the nearest gas station? I need to walk and go get uh, my man something to eat. And here we're doing an event. And I told the people what we were doing. But you've seen what happened there. I mean, it's now let, I, me ask, I, let, the, let the people know a little bit because they don't know so when you were doing this event and you saw that you were going to help to stop cps from snatching kids you got death threats didn't you oh yeah yeah oh yeah some of the same people who work with the senator because i told the people about this they don't know some of the people who work with senator Sh senator schaefer was also making death threats to you right yes sir Yep. So Absolutely. you were you were trying to set up the event to stop people's kids from getting taken, and people were on live Facebook saying, "I hope he dies. I'll kill you." All this stuff, right? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And there was also a group who helped Epstein when he when they were trying to cover up his tracks that was assigned to you as well, right? Yes, sir. And so they started making threats. They started hacking phones, doing all this stuff, attacking all the people who tried to fight. Attorneys were involved from CPS all over the country. Uh, judges would come on the videos, guardian that items, uh, people who actually send had people, send people to my house. Yep. I mean, I mean, it was it was it was crazy. Actually, yeah. it, I sit back and think about it now, and it's like, hey, man. You, you never know, you know what I mean? So, and back then I didn't have my guard up as much as I have it up now. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you know, what we're doing is a, it's a scary business, you know, it's, yes, it's sir. not, it, it's not a, it's not always, um, you know, you're brave, but e e even you or me, David, I mean, we're big men, but even we get uncomfortable. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a natural feeling that, that, it's there for a reason. It kind of sets your defense up for whatever you're getting ready for. But mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of things happen over the over the past few years. Uh, it was, mm -hmm. you know, and um, yeah, I, I would do it all again, though. There you go. See, that that's I'd what I try to tell the people. They don't know how many death threats and attempts that um, we really got. And uh they have no idea about that part of the life where people tell you like, oh, I know you right here. I'm going to come kill you right now. They don't know about the fake news reporters like getting hired to make fake articles and telling you, oh, we're going to set you up. We're going to get you. We're going to see you. I hope you get killed. You're not going to live long. And when one of our friends who was fighting the fight got killed in recent history, I saw where they said, oh, I, I can't wait for Dave Jose to get his. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It's so funny. Look, to even make that comment on look, whether you liked our friend or not, I'm sure everybody knows who we're talking about that's watching this video, you know, Howlett. Uh I loved Howlett. Uh I don't speak on Howlett uh, at all because uh I let Howlett's teachings and uh his um, consistency speak for itself. So if you it, yeah, if you can't respect what how it was doing weekly, uh, doing his shows, uh, giving out all the free information, uh, anybody that tried to mess with Jimmy tried to keep up with it. Uh, you got to understand when this platform gets big, when you're when, when you take off, you I don't want popularity. 
I'm not in, I don't want the popularity because I, mm-hmm. it, it, it's hard for me because I disappoint people more than I, than I help them because I can't respond to everybody that's trying to respond to me. That's why well, I don't want the popularity. That, that's know? part of the life, man. Like you get thousands it of is. messages and, and people don't realize sometimes they come at me and they're like, Dave, I need you to respond right now. I got something I'm facing. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's really that important, but I need you to deal with it. And I'm like, well, what's happening? You know? And sometimes they're just like, well, you know, I'm thinking about taking somebody to court to get some money for a house. And I'm like, are you dealing with something right now? You know, and I'm like, they're like, well, look, you need to hurry up, you know, because I need this and I need that. I'm like, man, there's people who got kids getting raped right now that's calling me saying my kids are being raped and we got evidence of it and we need you. But let me ask you this, Rob, so the people could get to some of the meat. And I don't want to hold you up too long. I know you got a lot of stuff you take care of and family and stuff. Um, Shoot, man, I'm on with David Jose. Are you kidding me, bro? Yeah, we we from you big we Rob, from Indiana to, we from Indiana to Arizona, bro. We, <laughs> we 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 live right now, so I'm I'm in at the winter. Hey, I can't do much right now, though, man. I can't. My health, it just I'm yeah. not bad. I mean, I just got this hernia going on, and it's, yeah. I've never had anything like this. In my well, life, you standing so. up straight, man. So I know, like, <laughs> it could be rough, you know. It could be a little rough. Yeah, and as long as uh, you got. As long as you ain't got to take no punches to the stomach, it might be easier, but it's still rough, right. you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll stand here. I'll stand here for this, and I'll stand here for this. Bro. But knowing knowing Definitely. you, you probably gonna go out and pick up some bales of hay and walk it around with your big old Popeye forearms. <laughs> not today, man. Not today. It ain't. It ain't going. Yeah, not today. I wish. So- I can't wait till June 9th to get this took care of. So Yeah. It's, well, I'll be praying, bad. man, and we'll all be praying, and we know God yeah. going to take care of you. You've been doing so much for everybody. But let me ask you, Rob, so when I first came in the movement, right, do you remember the time back then where it was like a ton of uh, people didn't know how to get kids back? They were stressed. We had haters in the movement saying no kids would ever come back. David, you're doing these Bible videos and trying to teach the people about God and courage. That ain't going to help nobody. God won't help you. No judges will go to jail. No kids will ever come back. Do you remember those days? More than you can, more than, more than I want to, David. More than I want to. <laughs> so people so, thought that stuff wouldn't work, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but, but they call on, they call on again for some reason. You know what I mean? These people that the stuff wouldn't work, I got in my inbox, you know, hey, can you come and help me? You know, so. Mm. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you this, because this is important. So has there ever been people who worked with my haters who didn't like me at first that you've witnessed get their kids back using my stuff? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's kind of deep that people who didn't like me at one time got to get the benefit of of using some of the stuff. And Stacy is here, too, guys. Stacy said, how could any of us forget? And that and that's what was deep is because we were watching people uh, who were acting like they were in a movement to help happy about people not getting their kids back and fighting to stop people from getting their kids back, calling in on cases, working with attorneys in the movement. So and, and let me ask you about this, too. So have you ever witnessed attorneys in the movement from different states interjecting themselves into other people's matters in totally different states? Absolutely. Does that even- that's a major problem in in the movement to me because look if look attorneys okay look if i'm walking up to you and i got my suit and tie on and i'm an attorney okay i'm held at the highest of highest among the the society and you're out there causing problems and and people could see this this is what i couldn't understand when all of it was going on Mm-hmm. It's, it's people could see it, but they still couldn't grasp it for some reason. You know what I mean? And and it's like when you got the biggest names, and I, I won't shun them. Okay, if people want to believe in them, they want to believe in them. I don't care. I just want you. I just want people to show up when we need them. There. That's it. You know. And uh, but when you got attorneys that are supposed to be the highest of the highest of prestige of what we're battling or what we're uh, fighting about causing more, um, it'd be like an optical illusion. You know what I mean? I mean, Mm -hmm. 
pe- people were masters at these optical illusion- illusions, you know, <clears throat> is what I call them, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if that's why people can't see it, see it, David, or, or what. They kinda, we- the people kind of worship the attorneys, but we got one yeah. of the biggest attorneys in the whole movement that actually helped Clinton write the law to that's, freaking that's- take kids from people. That's what that's what make here's the thing about that too. She she used that to launch her in this movement. But people didn't still didn't collect on it. Okay, look, if you're of the highest of highest of highest like that, you're working next to next to Clinton and you're you you're part of ASFA. Hang on a minute. What, why do you want? Why do you want to walk next to me? Uh, you know, and, you know what I mean. And you notice they never told us what was in Asper. We had to find it. It's like we wait, had to find it. Did it? And say, she didn't even tell us. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at. I'm like, dude, you knew about the original law that say we can't take kids from parents. You saw that. You the one who revised it. You added to it. How are you, you fighting for this? You know what I mean. I'm like, dude, you got to know what the first law says if you're going to change it into a new law. Then your 1997 law says you can't interfere with private family. And you don't tell us it said that. You just say it allowed people to take kids. Nowhere in there did it say you had the permission to take kids. I mean, and the funny part about it is it's, she'll brag. She'll, she'll put her, she'll want her glamour uh, out there because she'll put pictures up of who she was with when she wrote it. Mm-hmm. All right. And 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 still charge families five thousand dollars a case, knowing she helped write that, and knowing what it says in there. And she she remember she had her group of attorneys in the group, and one of them, Cliff, he wor- he was Bill Clinton's best friend since childhood, and actually wrote the charges to get him prosecuted Cliff. over freaking um, uh, the Monica Lewinsky thing. I think her name was the, yep. the dress lady. But then at the same time, she didn't tell that he did not write anything about them kids he was involved with. So it was like he kind of wrote an article, to, articles of impeachment to get him kicked out for that, but then suppressed the stuff about the little boys. Didn't even, didn't even, didn't even acknowledge it, man. You know? It's, and then he retracted his statement after Bill Clinton got impeached. He retracted his statement like he shouldn't have done it. But they were Jesuit friends in the same school back in the day. They were all paying the same union dues. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what they that's what they paying. <laughs> they got a con- they got a contract they go by. You know Woo! what I mean? They rat- they ratify it every couple years instead of every four. Yep. Uh, but yeah, uh, the thing about that is is we've we've David look. People can say what they want. People can do what they want. But hands down, you kept rolling. I knew if you kept rolling, we'd be just fine. Um, I told you from the beginning, you are the David that beat the Goliath. I told you that. Uh, you did. You did. Several times from the beginning. So um, that's, that's funny. That's, 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 that's just what you mean to me, man. So, I mean, it's funny it's gonna take you- all of us. You knew the law before me, but you brought me in and you, uh, you, uh, you know, like, kind of like Josh Barnett does now, you threw me over the edge. You're like, uh, Dave, come to DC. I'm like, DC? <laughs> like, dude, I don't go to right. DC. <laughs> right. right. What do you mean, DC? Yeah, dude, like, really, DC, let's go put the legislature on blast and let them know what's up. Right. See, and then, my idea of that, that t- at that time, though, this is what's so glorious about you, okay, to me, all right? Um, my, my idea at that time was to put this panel together to educate Congress and whoever else wanted to be there um, on all the different ethnics that's, that's involved in this. And when I approached you, I was like, hey, Dave, I would love it if you would speak for the black community. You didn't even say no. You didn't say yes. If you remember, you didn't even respond to that, right? And uh, you came and spoke for all of us, and you made that very clear. That's what you was going to do. 
and I appreciate that from you. And I didn't, and it wasn't that I was trying to single everything out, but in two, three years ago, I've learned so much from three years ago. You know what I mean? Now, if we had to go to do it, I'd do it totally different, you mm -hmm. know? And we might do it totally different here in the upcoming, you know? Yeah. Um. So, but that's what I was thinking. How could we show the, 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 um, the effect and the, and the, and the solution in our ethnic groups. And, and that would, tell, and I know in my mind, I was thinking that would bring us together closer. You know, we'd all be <clears> in the same building. We'd all be fighting for the same thing. We'd all mm -hmm. be talking about the same things and realize how much we really have in common when it comes to this situation. Yeah. You know, so, um, that was it. And then the other day I, I, I was watching what you were doing and, 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 um, uh, I like what you did the other day because you said you said the same thing, but you said it this time. I'm going to speak for all people. Yeah, and I appreciate that, David. Hey, that's the you thing, man. I mean? We all got to we all got to win together. We're suffering through some similar things all over the place, and the enemy wants us to fight each other or look at you know this bull that they presented us from the past. None of us were in slavery, and none of us were slave owners, and they want us to keep that battle going so that we can. Um, so they can prevent us from actually being effective at stopping the real enemy, which is a group of elite people, not just all white people or all black people. It was in a, it was a group of elite people who trashed everybody. Some of them were black. Some of them were white. Some of them were Jewish. Some of them were Roman. You know, there's, there's groups that are punishing everybody and faking as if, <coughs> um, they're trying to do right. But let me ask you, let me ask you this one. So you are someone who you, you studied a lot of things before me, got to be able to get the law knowledge down to the point where you can make it simple and ask people one question, they get stuck. So I want to ask you, have you ever uh, seen like any of the documents I use or affidavits or anything like that? Yes, absolutely. You have, you yes. gotten, you gotten to read through them and everything, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. When you, you know what's crazy is that people don't even understand how simple it is. <laughs> That's why a lot of people don't like it though. They're like, it's too simple. If you don't put it together like an attorney, then you didn't and name it some big name and say some big words, we can't believe it works, you know. Kiss made millions off of it. That's keep it simple, stupid. That's that's what their name was, and and it, it, it's not a harsh statement, really. So um and the, the the more look that's the that's the that's the uh, dynamite comes in small packages type of deal right there you know what i mean <laughs> Say so, if, it's, if it's this big and you hold it it's blowing your junk off <laughs> that's right that's right that's right <laughs> if it's this big and you hold it and it's called an m80 it might blow your junk off right <laughs> right right if you if you remember correctly when when uh, we went to California, okay, we went to California to help the young lady out. That got blown way out of proportion. I drove all the way there. You remember when I drove there? And yeah. You stayed up on the phone all night with me to make sure that we got this paperwork in correctly, right? Yeah. On that lady, that night, I told her, I said, look, you don't got a social security number. You don't, you're not even in our system. Mm -hmm. if you want to be really correct about it, you are a missing person. If you really want to be technical about it, you know, mm -hmm. your baby's got a social security number. That's not good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so I was like, I don't know how me and we could, we could possibly help you with this, but we're going to try this paperwork. Mm -hmm. Give me a second, David. I'm going to blow my nose and I'll be yes, right back. Right. Give me a second. Buddy. Okay. Hang on. Uh, but I can keep talking until I mute this for just a half second. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So we get there and Priscilla, um, I told her this because I felt very <laughs> strongly that if she didn't have a social security number, I didn't even know how we was going to begin to fight for, her, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, um, that was true. That was very, what I told her was true. I mean, um, then I came, I turned back around. I came back home, uh, got another phone call by a gentleman named Brian. Um, I actually called some of my partners. 
uh, we took off to Dallas, Texas, mm-hmm. just right after that. Yeah. Um, took, took the same paperwork. Uh, I sat in court with him that day via Zoom. Um, told him one to object. Uh, wrote a couple things down for him to object. Uh, mainly, just I wanted their point of I wanted their point of clarification. I wanted to to explain why they were giving him all these services. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They didn't want to do that, so that Whoa, kind of stopped the, them. They were trying to force services on him, like they do more. Yes, <clears throat> yes. So uh, I was just objecting the point of clarification, and then after we did that, we we definitely entered the affidavit via Zoom, right? Mm-hmm. But then we drove over to the courthouse and. It was it was it was kind of cool because I got to let my daughter see David Jose stuff is the, is the stuff right you know what I mean so I got to let my daughter even see it you know so what she did y'all do at the courthouse? So we went to the courthouse. We 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 uh, told the uh, clerk there at the courthouse that this is a uh, court of record document. It is court it of is, record it document. Is, oh shots! Yeah, oh, it's uh-oh. not. It, it don't go in your business files for the, for the family court. Oh, and she she kind of looked at me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but Brian kind of looked at me and he was like, "Oh boy," you know. And I was like, "It's okay. We're we're here in honor. We're not here threatening these people." You know, oh, I'm just so we believe in being nice, right? Ooh. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, if I was doing something wrong, I'd want somebody to come up and tell me, "Hey, you're doing something wrong." I wouldn't take offense to it. I would have an open mind enough to say, okay, maybe I am doing something wrong, you know, Let's see. Yep. just because my textbook says I'm doing it right. Don't mean it's right. Cause we got morals and stuff. We got to go by, you know what I mean? Yeah. Them dang textbooks, man. <laughs> so, so we entered that on the court of record. Um, I, told, I gave Brian a hug, told him, Hey man, call me. We'll talk. We talked, we talked all the way home. Uh, got home week and a half later got a phone call he got his son back <laughs> Hold that up. Quick. So, look, y'all didn't do any extra services you dropped the freaking court of record document off like a freaking boss rolled the freak out and talked to him said peace homie i see you and then he calls you and tell you, you got his son back yeah i let these dudes talk and talk and talk and talk and and what i hit them with the point of clarification at a, at a point where they they just they were they stuck had, they had to end the court right go. then and there, you know what I mean? So, and I knew it was going to do it. And he, he's like, what's going on? What's going on? I said, let, them, <laughs> let them do what they're going to do. Cause they're back in the chamber. Going, man, something's up with this, man. How do you know to say that? Hey, you know, it's, it's funny though, when you understand the law of simplicity and you start catching what they're doing and you can see it real time, you're not scared anymore. You can drop something on him that say, er, it's like when Jesus asks a question and he's like, so are you saying that this happened because of this or because of this? And they're stuck. Can't say nothing else. It's immediate estoppel. Court case done. Can't nobody say nothing. They can't move. Chess been played. And you just said a couple of words. But that's funny you said that because couple. you don't have to always say some crazy outlandish, super smart seeming thing. You smack them with a point of clarity at the right time when you knew what they were doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Services have been complete. And there was well, you're gonna if you're gonna make me do more services, I want you to clarify why I'm gonna be doing those services. Mm-hmm. And they, 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 the, the service is illegal to begin with, so they're not gonna clarify it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they can't clarify it because they don't even know what the service is. Yeah. So they were stuck, bro. And it was just like pow. pow. And I said, wow. hey, let's go, let's go drop this document off. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I've seen kids come home. We'll see what happens. You mm-hmm. know, and he was afraid he was going to go to jail because he'd been watching all the other bull crap. Liars, the, fake, the fakers. Like, <laughs> if you use David's stuff that was working with Epstein, right. them, if you use David's stuff, you'll go to jail. I'm like, can you name one that went to jail? I mean, I know a lot of them with kids home. Can you name one that went to jail and show the show the record? Oh, you can't. Well, it's like people take it personal when, like, <laughs> like I haven't heard from Brian uh, since the day he called me and said, hey, I got my thumb back. Now, ain't that funny, too, because I, I try to let the people that, like, it's a crazy thing. Like, don't, when you go to save somebody's kid, you put your life on the line because the government officials make 83000 to 140000 per kid per year. 
You get up, you go all the way over there. They could want to kill you for telling the truth and stopping them. Literally, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. killing their system. And then people will get their kids back and not love you enough to encourage the other parents by telling them. It's right. crazy. It is crazy. It, it, like, that's like a that's like a double edged sword for me. Yes, though. yes. It, it, it is because it's like you know what, man, dude. You and I'm not saying this about you, but I'm saying this about certain people that call me and want my help. It's like, dude, you done talk my head off for three weeks straight. Good. <laughs> hey, I could take a break from you for a minute. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's like what you're saying. Come on, man. You got to go out and help the next parent. Yeah. You got you got to go out and help. And it's really not even helping the next parent, man. I mean, it is. See, I've been thinking in my mind, it's like, you know, interest is the best child, inter, uh, best interest uh, for a child, right? You take mm -hmm. that. Why is that the only, only thing that in this planet that we is okay with, with Hitler? Yeah. We ain't okay with, we ain't okay with anything else Hitler ever did, but we're okay mm -hmm. with that. Why? Yeah. Like well, they know what the best interest of a kid is and it and is nowhere. It exists nowhere in the law. You can't find that term and qualify it from the law books, but that's what they use to take your kids. And and they have no You can't, David, work. because you can't, because listen, a kid can't be responsible for anything. A kid mm -hmm. is not an adult. A kid is not responsible for their actions. Mm -hmm. So why isn't the best interest of the family? There you go. You understand? Well, that's the thing. So, the parents have the, the liberty interest. So if the parents have the liberty interest and they have the right to the care, custody, and control of their little one, there is no trust document, constitution anywhere in the country that says somebody could take your kid from you. It don't exist. They made it up. We proved it. Yeah. yeah let me ask you we this. Proved it. <laughs> Do you remember that girl who... Um, she was working with some of the guys who hate me. <laughs> I think her name was Jamie. And she put in the affidavit. You remember she got her kids back. And then she told, like, well, I used Dave's affidavit. Yeah. And I put it in a court case. And I got my kids back. All and then right. they were like, are you sitting here saying David Jose's name? You're not supposed to say he did anything. Well, he, I did use his stuff. <laughs> I did use his stuff. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a guy, this is, this one right here is what, um, really, really, and, and you know who this is too. And once this comes out, um, once this comes out, it's going to blow the roof off of everything, David, I promise you that's I'm, I'm, I'm waiting too. Um, but over in Pennsylvania, we got a case going on. We've used nothing but what you talk about. Mm -hmm. Nothing. All right. Mm -hmm. This gentleman has been fighting this system for twelve years. Mm -hmm. They actually they actually took his daughter into uh custody and put her in a mental hospital. Um, she's been in that mental hospital for ten years. All right. So when we filed this paperwork, guess what they did? What? They let her go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, they come back and wrote us a letter said we can't handle we can't handle this one no more. We're just gonna let her go. <laughs> hey, wait, ain't that funny? They never tell you uh the paperwork worked. And this is why we're giving the kid back. They got to make up something else. Well, uh, we don't have control over the kid anymore. But you were making money off the kid all this time. Ten years. But the crazy part about that was, David, is was got the girl home. Okay. Then they came back and took her again. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, put her back in the facility again. Mm -hmm. Um. It took about two weeks to get her out this time, mm -hmm. uh, because we 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 went deeper. We went, went we went deeper. We went for the judge's oath. We went for we went for everything at that point. Um, so pretty and, much putting more people on notice, connecting the dots between who's doing the wrong, so that everybody sees it. Everybody's connected. Everybody knows. So if you want to play this time, your ain't is in trouble. It took it took two weeks 
to get her home. It might have been three weeks, but it was somewhere right around in that time frame. But she's she's with uh, the other daughter now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's with the other daughter now. So so she lives with the family like she should have all along. Um, my man, my my dude hasn't got to. He, I, I I'm sure he goes in Caesar, but I don't know that for sure. You know what I mean? I don't because I don't live yeah. over in Pennsylvania, but I would. You know what I mean? I would. Yeah. So, um, but she is at the daughter's house and she is out for good this time. So, um, that's been the most amazing one. Um, I think there's a court case coming up in, I think it's probably about two months away. I want to say September. I want to say September, David, but, uh, could be wrong. It's somewhere around in there, but that's when the next court date is It's like September 9th or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's when, that's when we're going to try to put the judge in jail. So, um, it's, I I forgot about what you told me. Forget Forgive me because we got a delay. So I didn't mean to interrupt. No, Um, that's okay. There's a couple of second delay for us. And then like a 10 second delay for the people in the comments. So you'll see, we'll say something, then it'll wait for a second, and then it'll it'll start going again. But go ahead, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's what that's that's what the the my buddy wants to do. He wants to uh, try to, you know, make this man pay for what he's done. So mm-hmm. that's 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 what we're going after next. We'll see what the remedy would be. Uh, we'll see what they're going to offer. I'm sure there will be. Um, I'm sure there will be some kind of offer that they will throw up on the table. Uh, but there's, there's, there's really no remedy for this, man. I mean, 12 years, 10 years in a, in, in a mental institution, uh, time loss, uh, whatever they've gave that child throughout the 12 years, you don't know. All them records are probably, you know, gone, shredded, uh, you know, so, there is no real remedy to that you know i mean i mean that's that's the worst part about this whole situation yeah he's relieved that you know his 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 granddaughter's out and the daughter's got the child back right yeah he 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 wants to see her you know what i mean um but then again he's he's been beat up so mentally bad that you know, it's, it's, it'd take years. It'd take, it'd take 10 years to, to heal that situation. And, and, you know, some people 50, 60 years old now don't got 10 years, Yeah. you know? So. It's, it's kind of deep though, that you have all these years of pain and suffering. Um, but y'all come up with uh, some documents or whatever. And shortly after they're like, get these kids out of here. We don't even want them. <laughs> We don't like this kid this much. Um, Get out of here. Right. And they give you the kid back. And it's funny because, you know, people have tried to say, well, David, where's your enforcement? And I'm like, so if I give people notice of the law and they give kids back, you want me for some reason to still force them when they already decided to give them back based on the law. Like, so it's not good that I'm using the law and the kids are coming back. And it's not just me. Anybody can do it because. You already had a knowledge of the law, of course, and you know other things, but you're taking these things and giving it to people and people are seeing success. Now, some people get silly and they think, okay, well, if I give them one thing and they don't do something, then there's nothing else I could do and they stop fighting. No, it just means it's a it's a more gangster criminal and you got to keep pushing and keep attacking and you will win. You know, it's going to happen, you know, but. Part of remedy is bound in, you know, us knowing. So when somebody sees that somebody else is telling someone what to do and what to say, and you're standing with them a lot and you helping do paperwork with them, a lot of times those judges look and say, holy crap, this, this ain't one dude by himself knowing the truth. It's more than one. And this dude don't right. seem like he's from here. I ain't never seen him before. <clears throat> so the judges start getting worried because they realize they've been breaking the law. Um, and. You know what? There was another story you told me about um, at the hospital <laughs> where you called the sheriff. Do you remember that one? Oh, 
Yeah, the, the, I had to call the sheriff in to, to, to make the CPS worker leave, yeah. Now, uh, tell, me, tell me what you did and what you showed the sheriff, because that was funny as heck. Well, I just showed them that. So I just showed them all the information that we have. I mean, basically what I do is I, I got, you know how you can create notes in your phones now? Man, I got all that information right there in order. So if I walk into some place, I open up my notes and there all the information is and I don't really have to go searching for it anywhere. I got it, you know, it's right there in hand and, you know, so if you're, if you're doing, if you're doing this and, and you're trying to protect yourself and it, it, it'd be wise to start you like a, a thing in your phone and your notes to, to really put this stuff in order to where, you know, where it's at. So if, um, you know, you're ever, to protect yourself then you got it so yeah that's basically all i did david was show them the you know the 19 the the social security act um 1935 um, 1101 35 yeah. yeah showed them 1101-6d and then i and i said you wouldn't even believe this and then i start showing them what was in the aspa <laughs> <laughs> and i was like and 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 the sheriff you know, took the CPS worker outside. I don't know what he said to her, but she never came back. So, so, so he um, the CP usually the CPS worker gets sent with the officer with a gun and like, give me your kid right now or you'll never see him again. Right. But you show yep. the you you call the sheriff and show the sheriff the law. And then the yep. sheriff goes outside. The gangster CPS worker has nothing else to say. The CPS worker leaves and the parent you work with got to take their kid home. Right. Right, right, absolutely. Still so got you, their kid. It's it's crazy because uh, like the youth come to me so much around here now. Uh, I'm busy with my community a lot, you know. Um, I'm I'm really handling things outside of court. We don't usually step into court with most of my people. So, which is smart. Um, which is smart. It's. Do you want them taking your kid's college education or what do you want? You know, I, I mean, it, I don't want them taking your kid's funds. They took, I, if I can help anybody, that's, yeah, I <laughs> mean, they took all my funds. So uh, all my kid's funds. Uh, so um, that's what I try to protect with parents. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I do. And I, I don't, I make it known that that's what i'm trying to protect you know yes sir yes sir so you have witnessed though and if you got to sneeze take care of it and come back when you can um uh, oh that's okay um uh, but you can't say 100 percent uh, um that you've seen the different teachings that i've come with you see me in real life you have went and met with real parents across the country or or help help them from where you were <clears throat> and seeing the things work and seeing us get justice in real life cases with real life people who got their real life kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thing about you too, David is what people don't understand is you're, you're still growing too. You know, um, and that's the beautiful thing about you. I mean, you're, you're, you know, you might come back a week from now and find something totally different that is out of Hawaii all books that nobody even seen. You you just don't know. You know what I mean? You're still growing too, and uh, I appreciate uh, and the people should appreciate um, watching you grow through this yeah. because you're 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 putting your you're putting yourself out there, man. I mean, you're 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 doing it. You're you're staying with it. You're not you're not backing off. So. And I knew you wouldn't, so I'm very proud of that. I am very well, proud of that. I appreciate those words, man, and I appreciate you uh, taking the time <clears throat> to uh, offer for me to come to D.C. twice the second time. Um, we were able to put them on notice at the, what is the building yeah, called? Was... Rayburn Building, Longhorn Building, something. I don't know. <laughs> Wherever the legislature hang out, we were in their house. <laughs> well, I mean... <clears throat> If the people really knew how complicated this is to, and then you get, and then you, you know, your, your anticipation, you, you, you go, we, like we was back to the log cabin the night before, right? 
brother, you just sat in there and you prayed all night. Uh, we had meals. Everybody was talking, was playing music. Some was out by the campfire. It, it was good, right? Everybody was anticipating what was going to happen at 8 o'clock in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. So we get in the van. We let mm-hmm. people know, hey, we're headed over. We're getting ready to do this. We're walking up the sidewalk, and we get a dreaded phone call. Then we. Yep. How does that happen? Shoop. Because the dang attorney who helped write the law who helped Clinton – was in the know and she popped up and was in there when we got there. Like, how the freak you getting in the dang place when we get here? We just found out we were moving. People don't blame me when I tell them that. See, this, this is I, the thing we that, opened up the door and they, but they're already there. Huh? They're already there and change the dang terms. Change the the room number. Already got a hold to some of the officials who said they were coming. Tried to block it. People who helped Clinton make the law to take the kids and lied about what was in the laws. There to try to stop the event because they knew that we were putting Congress on notice and letting them know we were bringing that smoke. And by God, we still got to have a representative there um, and somebody take notes so that it could all be shown what happened. People got to video record it. And then we got to send out everything we did to every single legislative body member in Congress. And some good things came out after that. And, um, and and God blessed us and the nation got shook because the people got to see, oh, the, the federal legislature can no longer get away with this bull. They know now. And you know what's, you know what's crazy, David? About all of it. Okay. We're walking up the sidewalk. Everything changes. We go do our thing. We still do our thing. Blow it out the water, right? Yeah. I was aggravated. You was trying to keep me calm. He was like, hey, man, it'll be all right. We'll get it done. We're going to get it yeah. done, right? You know? Yeah. Um, and <laughs> it, it's just crazy because uh, we got to do it one more time, David. I'm down. Let's freaking bring that heat. I don't, you know me. I don't give a free. We got to do it one more time. <laughs> I don't want to do it, but we got to, man. It's it's exhausting, dude. Let's bring that smoke. See, and that's the thing I like about you is that you did the things that other people wouldn't even think about doing. Like, I'm like, yeah, let's just teach people around the country and bring that freaking smoke, right? You're like, let's go to DC and tell them in their face. I'm like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, let's just go walk up in the house and tell them. Let's set it up, set up a meeting. They they know we coming. They got the, the invite for everybody, right? And let's just walk up in their freaking face and let them know what that smoke is. <laughs> it's um, we was talking about it the other day, like um, like I need like the women of this movement. I'm I'm proud of you, women of this movement. I am uh, very very proud of you, women. Uh, some of you, I think, stronger than men. Um, it's true. And I hate, and I'm not downgrading anybody by what I'm about to say here, but some of the men need to be men. Um, women don't take offense to me saying what I'm about ready to say, but, and I believe this because everything is a learned behavior. Um, me and David playing in the sandbox at seven years old didn't even look at each other for the tone of our skin we we looked at each other because we were having fun playing in the sand together that's that's just what it is okay it's it's, it's learned behavior so but i think that we're in this situation because of the divorce courts right um the judges are the head mafia bosses <laughs> call, it, call it for what it is um and, um, you know, the women, though, have, 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 have showed that children have went with women, you know, 80% more than men. So that's how they get a paycheck. The, the, the judges and stuff, they don't know about that. They don't know about that. So, <laughs> but that's how they do it. But so, and that's it, it, just being natural. And being being what we are as humans, um, 
if I was raised by a woman, I think that I would be, acquire more woman qualities. I, I, I was raised around my grandmas, my grandpas, my mom and dad were 15 years old and 14 years old when they had me. So I was with my grandmas, my grandpas, my, so I was around a lot of women, a lot of men, right? So I saw a lot of women that were true women that would beat you with a yardstick <laughs> just as quick as you know, the men would, you know? So, um, but, We've raised we've raised a society of men that have a lot of women traits. And I don't know how to change that, David. And and, 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 and I think that's that right now is our biggest, biggest, biggest fight. Um I'm not saying know your place, um on this earth because nobody really knows their place on this earth, but just know your role, you know, know your role. And, um, you know what I think? I think biblically, when you look at the Jesuits and how they created feminism, and if you look at like this whole white against black thing, right? How they have, Oh, race war. Oh, black people shooting cops. Oh, white people don't like black people because they shoot cops. Oh, black people don't like white people because they're oppressed and all this bull crap. Right. That same type right. of um, psychological programming is what is used when it comes to um, feminism and and the role of men. And let's just be real. Like, we have been trained that to believe that men don't need women and women don't need men. Right. And it's the craziest thing in the world because in order for us to co-produce, and in order for us to bring forth more people, we have to have men and women involved to even have a baby. It's a, it's a basic fundamental principle of God. Then what happens is they have take them, taken the men and, and you just look in media, look in sports. They got Dwayne Wade wearing women's clothes. Then they got his kid wearing women's clothes. They got these dudes starting them out with kilts like it was a culture thing. Then they start wearing dresses with high heels. And the people didn't see what it is that Satan was doing. Now, a lot of people get upset with me for saying this. And people, even in the movement, people who interview me, they get upset about certain things I say because it seems like I'm so strong on what God has said. But the thing is, is that men and women need each other. Women need men with masculinity. If you just watch when it comes down to these whole things where they're like, look, we don't want uh, women women don't want their children to be forced to get vaccines, right? Well, right. what happens is after they don't want to be forced, the first thing that happens is they go down and start protesting. Then you see cops grab them and yank them down and get rough with them, hit them with their little billy clubs, and they turn and look and they say, where are the freaking men who should be standing up? Now you got hit with reality. If there are no men to do the things that God has put men here to do, then what happens is right when you're in a position where you got to fight somebody who's pushing you with a billy club unlawfully on the property that you pay for. Right. And you can't get men to step next to you. Now, we saw in California, <clears throat> remember we were watching the whole protest when we were on the, in the van going on the way to D.C.? We were like, right. it's getting lit, right? It's getting but, crazy down there. Yes, yep. uh, Sandra R.N. and the Freedom Angels, they were fighting. And you saw more people in California stand than I have ever seen in history. And California is known for kind of being like soft, right? Right. And we seen them ladies standing up and then we start seeing men in military outfits coming there with the Constitution folded in their holsters. And they started to stand together and it was crazy. They were singing uh, songs about God and freedom and it was something that shook the nation. And I told people, I said, watch what this does across the nation. Then it went all the way to New York and New Jersey, I believe. And we were right. watching it later on. And, and they were just standing up in fire and men were coming. And that's the thing is that we got to stop letting people divide and conquer us. It's not about your color. It's not about man or woman. Women, uh -huh. please understand, you don't want to die alone, Right. I know too many women who believe this bull who took a paycheck from Social Security. They get older and they don't have enough money to live off of. And then at the same time, somebody's telling them, oh, uh, your man ain't worth nothing. 
But you know dang well there's some stuff you like men for. <laughs> All right. You if a man is a real man and he will be your backbone and support what you're trying to do, build you up, you know, do the things that men do, pick up freaking the heavy stuff, right? Let you be what you want to be. Y'all are a better team than you guys are people who fight each other over the kids. But the bar attorneys need y'all fighting over kids so, so they can get a paycheck. They don't make money unless one parent get the kid all the time or most of the time. And bar attorneys have came out and said this on live TV. So we got to get rid of this idea that you don't need a man. You, you know, if you got a kid, right, and you want a little boy to learn how to be a boy. And then the little boy gets to a certain age and he starts saying, mama, I'm going to tell you what the freak to do. And you like, no, you're not, boy. And he raises his hand at you. Then you're like, well, I need a, I need a father figure. I need a male somebody who can get this dude in check. One thing about boys is, is that boys will be boys when they get old enough to realize they're supposed to be strong. They will be boys. And it's good to have balance because a mom teaches a boy how to have uh, softness and wisdom and have balance. By the time he gets testosterone, he starts using the thoughts that his mother gave him before he got tough, right? So his mom giving him wisdom and nurturing says, hey, I know you can like punch this guy's face off, but it's better if you do what God said and have empathy like Lady Green is saying. See, right. women are very good at usually speaking and they can strike a hole in your heart with their tongue. They don't need to use a fist. This is why women have fights. They hate each other forever. Men have fights. We get a couple of black and blue eyes, you know, broken knuckle, maybe. The next day, right. y'all can be cool, right? Right. So the thing is, is that we got to understand that um, we do very well together and we make balance, right? But this whole idea that, oh, no, you can't, you can't love, uh, you can't love a woman, man. They, they're not good for you. No woman is good. Well, that's just stupid thinking and bad programming. And what has to happen is men and women <clears throat> need to come together, understanding that there has been a programming to make them not like each other. In the black community, um, I'll just say it like it is. Um, you will hear fights sometimes between black men and black women. You'll hear sometimes in women's locker room talk. They'll say, oh, that dude is super dark. He's a, he's a thief. This dude is super light. He's a playboy, right? You hear these things. Um, and, and to act like we don't hear it is stupid, you know? You'll hear between men and women, oh, well, this bleep just want me for my money. Then you'll hear women say, oh, he think he's all that because he's doing business. He's making money. He got a nice house. He got a nice car. So <clears throat> somewhere in the teaching, it has been put into people that a man who is doing work that he's supposed to do, being what he's supposed to be, even if he seems like a little square, right? Because in, in the ghetto with me, that's how they look at me like, this man don't cuss, um, right? We didn't say curse. We said cuss. This man don't cuss. He's a nerd. Now, Antoine Johnson can tell y'all he's from Detroit. He know how it is. Um, He's not a yeah. He's it's not a doughboy. He's not a doughboy. He ain't driving the Benz. I did have a vet, but he ain't driving the Benz. He's not a drug dealer. He don't curse, right? He don't hang out with clowns, right? He's not out there trying to rob people. He ain't the kind of guy I'm looking for. I'm looking for a bad boy. That's that's how it was in Detroit, right? And so it was very hard for me to relate with people because I didn't do those things, and it was the norm. You had a lot of killers, a lot of drug dealers, and people glorified that. So, you know, um, it wasn't in my teaching to, to get connected, right? Yeah. And so that was with teaching. But then you look in, even in white America, you got women and men divorcing like crazy. It's got to be like 70% now. Yes. The, the number of kids who have both parents in one household is unfreaking believable. And yeah. it's really because they don't want the people to work together because it makes money. When you're getting ready to get a divorce, what do they do? Man, you better hurry up and get her. She go, I know her attorney. He going to come for every penny you got. You better get her. Get her for every penny. You ain't going to have a chance later. 
they pit you against each other and say, if you don't fight them with everything you got, you're in trouble. Then they'll ask how much money you got. They'll ask her how much money she got, right? So now they know how much money both of y'all got and they're making y'all tee it off and they just suck up billable hours until y'all both out of money. <laughs> Right, it's like the first thing they ask for. You know, what I mean, nobody catches it. It's like, wonder why they asked for my money first. They didn't ask me about my kids or anything, or you know how my health was, or you know, am I okay? I just want my money. You know, you know, it's crazy, dude. It's it's. Do you? It's it's like it's like cancer. They're like, well, it's going to be a big fight. And we don't know if you're going to win, but we're going to poison the heck out of it and burn the heck out of it. And if you can survive the big fight against cancer after all this money, then God be with you. Right. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're like, how much money you got? Okay, you got 30000 You got some money in your 401k? Oh, man, you got a house? Okay, we're going to sell that. And we're going to go ahead and fight this battle. Get you all the way to the end. Then they're like, well, I don't have nothing left. Well, we're going to just leave you with this $2,000 a month child support order. We're going to go and get double funds matching from the federal. So we're going to split up another 2000 a month and we're going to donate the rest to the general fund to pay the legislature back for helping us. And we good, right? We good. Yeah, that's, we how good. They, that's how they're ripping people off. But the people don't get a chance to see this. They don't often get a chance to meet with real people like you, bro. And, uh, you know, I just wanted them to have that opportunity. You've been able to see real things. Um, that have been done. You've been able to use work that I have. You've been able to encourage me and say, David, come up with something uh, to do this. I don't, that, you know? I don't like, I don't ever want you to quit. I can't. I want, I want this to, <laughs> I want this to uh, slow down for you for sure. Uh, I want your life to be in a little bit more balance because you deserve that. You're a good man. So, uh, but I don't ever want you to quit. You know well, what I mean? For because I, I don't I, and this shouldn't be a lifelong battle. This they, really shouldn't. They about so. to fall, bro. They're falling now. It's about to happen in front of everybody. Like we're at a time right now, bro. And I know you know this. You've seen me and watch me. We're at a time right now where the government officials are flaking and falling apart. And we've had opportunities like that in history where we trap them in certain areas and they can't run. And then people who were connected to us who destroy everything and sabotage. Or people who were against us, who knew what we were doing, would try to destroy and sabotage. But this time, I think God had to move us higher up in the game with more of the bad actors so everybody could see it. And then it's it's crazy how all that works, isn't it? Yeah, it's but funny. One, but we're but people people like I don't talk to you every day, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, what I like to absolutely, I know. But you live a life, I live a life, so. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know every time that I talk to you, it's going to be the same. There's nothing changed between me and David. And, and that's how I know everything's going to be okay. And everything's real. There's just certain people in this thing that we got going on with us right now that I know are going to be there when we need them, that's you right. know? And, um, uh, it's, it's, that's all, that's, man, that's, that's real family right there to me, that's you know? Right. That's right. Uh, to take off and meet somewhere and say, look, we're, we're going to, we don't know what this is going to do, but we're going to just go up there and we're going to walk up in there and try to get our, everybody's children back and, and, you know, to even, for someone to even have a bad word to speak about that is just, off the chain to me clown uh, yeah so it's like yeah. you know um but the, solid people man just solid people so it's like you know that's what i that's what i'm glad that we got uh i feel that when it's when i say um uh, Hey guys, it's time to put the team back together and let's, 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 uh, you guys have got connections now. Uh, let's meet some of the people that you're connected with. Um, let's, let's grow this even bigger and there'll be that time come, but I got to get a little bit stronger again. And, uh, so, but that's what I'm looking forward to, David. Actually. Oh, it'll, it'll come soon, bro. I mean, you know, God does everything 
at his time and at his pace. Everybody who wants to get with me real quick, I'm sorry for the online affidavit class. You can hit me up at, at Dave Cares for You on Telegram and talk to me about it. I'll hook you up and help you to get to it. If Jessica is not busy, I'll have her set you up. If she's busy, I'll set you up. Um, but bring the people now. Let's roll. Let's get class going and get you guys taught and trained so we could um, kick some butt or whatever all across the nation. And you know you can share that with all of your fighter groups as well as up to three families for the affidavit class. And it sits there. I just can't do... I can't always do an affidavit class for every state individually. So people told me to do it and just like, David, just make a course. We'll, we'll pay a membership fee for it. Just do it, get it out there so we can all see it and we can have it because we know you can't do one for every single state and for your private, um, for your private schools or whatever for the kids. So it's all done and it's there. All you got to do is go on telegram at Dave cares for you. But um, once again, Robert, you're a hundred percent right, bro. I mean, you know, God lets everything happen the way that it needs to. I never would have thought I'd be fighting uh, to deal with a situation where somebody stole a selection, right? And I would have to deal with this. And so it's kind of weird or whatever, because you don't imagine that you would do stuff like this, but I didn't imagine that I would ever go to DC to talk about anything for some kids. So, you know, it's all just a growing process. You learn and, and God brings certain people in your life at the time, like you, like Josh Barnett, you know, um, like John Gentry, you know, God brings certain people at a certain time. Not everybody going to always roll with you. You know, some people in the midst of fighting, they become haters, <laughs> you know, um, I, I got it's easier. Now. It's easier for them to do that than it is it to is. just be like, okay, let's see. I was thinking about that today too, before, because I, I knew I was coming on here with you, and I was like, "Man, so look, you don't have to like anything about anybody in this thing. The only thing that I would ask from anybody is simple respect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't like. I love David. Don't get me wrong. David's my brother, and will be for my life. But when it comes down to my children, if this man knows how to help me with my children in any aspect in life, not just affidavits. If David's got advice for me on being a better father to my children, I'm going to accept it. And I, I wouldn't have to like David to accept that information. I would just respect David. So uh simple respect will go a long ways in this. Um, please uh, keep in mind when you're talking to people through this whole thing that people are hurt. Uh, I always say that um, hurt people hurt people, but that's no excuse uh, because you actually know what you're doing. So, yeah. um, you know, for me, I'm 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 just blessed to be a part of the little part of what what we're doing, man. And then and, and uh, I'm watching it grow every day. And I just told my buddy the other day, I was like, man. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like you see a war started over this stuff, you know, between the people here. And it's not a, it's not a natural war like with guns and all the other stuff. It's a mental, it's a mental war that they got going on right now. And, uh, you know, just stay strong and keep people around you that's real with you and close to you. Even if the pain, even if it hurts when they're telling you something, uh, as long as you know the real people around you, they're not there to hurt you. They're there to guide you in the right way. So mm -hmm. that's that's really the best advice I can give. Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. You know, I got a little bit of heat because I um you know how I am, man. Like I don't I don't let people play around with uh trying to lie to the people or trying to stop the people from kicking butt or whatever. And I got I got some little static the other day because somebody kept following me trying to force me. Uh, to give them information that they wanted to steal and use themselves. And then they tried to get, you know, get people to attack me saying that my stuff don't work or whatever. And I'm like, look, you know, I'll show people all day, every day that, um, that I've been able to help and work with, but it's a crazy thing is hate. And then, you know, some of the people who are around, they just think that, Oh, David, you should just let people lie on you and not say anything. You should just shut the freak up. I'm like, we're in this problem we're in today because we've been so politically correct that we allow people to just say whatever just to look cute and, and rub elbows with people. 
And you know me, I'm like, look, you can love me or not. You can be with me. You can roll away from me. You can do whatever. You know, the same thing with me. I ain't never changed. Right. right. Somebody like, oh, we want to hate on Robert. I'm like, oh, you can have a problem with me too. Then. So do you think right. whatever. Right. Like you got something to say about him. Like, don't come to me talking that jump, you know? Right. And I think a lot of people are not like that. Because they want to be part of the drama. They want to be in the know. They want to be in the click. And the thing about me is I don't give a freak. The people who want to move forward and win, we're going to win. And the people who want to be haters and drop, you know, uh, drop you because you say certain things or because you tell the truth. I'm like, you can roll without me because God will open every door that's to be open. And I don't need anybody else's door, you know. And so I believe we're going to have some good blessings. Um. We're going to continue to kick butt and move forward, and God going to do some powerful things. So, I'm happy and thankful and enjoying it. You know, I believe that. Happy you know, you remember when we came back from DC and you you had people on there and they they were so interested in you, they thought they could even tell you how to talk on your videos. Oh yeah, and you, and you were saying freaking, 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 <laughs> and, and and it was it was funny, man. I was sitting back laughing my butt off because he's like drunken, freaking, 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 freaking. You, you're just going <laughs> off with it, you know. <laughs> so I was like, well, David's in rare form right now, so uh, you know we're gonna let him let him go with this one, but <laughs> that's all the, of it. All of it's growing gonna, pains, dude. They, they think they gonna break you, bro. Like peer pressure. Oh, we go. We gonna force you and make you do this, and I'm like, you you must not know me <laughs> very well. Right, right. Like, we go, we go shoot you. They're like, call me up. With the, some of the elders like, hey man, David, he 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 be freaking out on the, on his video today with the freaking stuff. And Robert, is he okay? I say, man, David's fine. He just he just being David. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, hey, yeah. I look at it like this. <clears throat> If you are somebody who doesn't let another man get jurisdiction over you when he doesn't have the right to, then you have to teach the other people the same thing. And if you bow down before somebody because of their personhood, oh, they're a government official, they're a lawyer, they're this, they're a doctor, and you won't speak the simple truth because they come before you, then you teach the people how to submit to men because of their person, what their status is. And I'm like, no, if you tell the truth, I'm rolling. But if you come talking stupid, like you're not going to come contest me. You could talk stupid on your own, but if you come contest me with some dumb junk, it's going to be all the smoke. <laughs> you know, you're getting the whole thing, like not even in partitions, right? You're just getting the whole thing, you know? But that's right. how people learn to stand and fight. That's right. I only bow to God. So, you know, I respect anybody. You know, when you come to me and say, Dave, but. Have you done a video lately? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, hey, have you done any videos, man? Uh, see, I already know what's happening. I already know this is correction, right? And I humbly take it because you're telling the truth and you know it's what I need to do. You can feel the pulse of the people and know the people need more help, Dave. Have you done a video lately, lately bro? And, and you're checking me, right? And it's firm. And right away I say, okay, bro, I get it done. <laughs> right? No right. arguments. No fights because you're telling me right. So I listen every time. When you say, uh, bub, we're gonna go down to DC in three weeks. <laughs> I was we trying know. to keep it, I was trying to keep it secret, but you're ready to roll, right? Let's go, bro. Right. Right. Let's go. So that's the thing, bro. I mean, I, I tell people and I don't joke around when I say this. You know me, any judge, any attorney, any Supreme Court justice, any government official, any day of the week, I won't practice. They can get it all, right? They can either do right by, and I'm not being cocky. It's just a simple fact that the people need to learn they can stand on their own with simple truth. That's what you teach, and that's what I teach. You don't use no big words. You don't go in there like, uh, we got to do a you know, um, memorandum of habeas corpus, whatever, right? You just go in there like, look, here's what the law says. Boom, we're going to rock with this. We're going to roll with this. Boom, y'all got it? Y'all got it? Point of clarity, right? There, there's, the just, there's just there's no <laughs> argument for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There is no... Yeah. They have, they have at that point when you hand that to them and people don't understand standing, but they don't even have standing in that building with you when you when you actually yep. turn that in. So nothing. It's um, but man, I'm I'm proud of Josh too because Josh is uh, he's um, he's not backing down. Neither, he's like so he's like you, bro. He he's like another one of you, dude. Like big old football dudes, buff as heck, traps, muscle everywhere. <laughs> 
man, y'all exactly the same, bro. He he's really a lot like you. He kicks me over the edge all the time. He's like, David, let's save the nation and turn all the businesses to PMAs. And I'm like, <laughs> right. Okay. And he's like, okay. And then he puts me in private chats, bro, and hit me with like 30, 40 people at a time. And I You're don't changing. sleep. I don't sleep, bro, for a month and a half to two months. Literally, like I'll get two hours of sleep because he'll flood me with so many people. But we opened up over a hundred and 112, 13 private entities, bro. And they're functioning and, and doing well. We brought one on yesterday. So things are moving well. But hey, I know I'll talk you to death. I'm supposed to do a video with Josh in a little bit. We're about to break down some stuff we're doing. We're tell going he don't after- know me. He don't know me, but tell him I'm proud of him, man. I'll watch what he oh, does. I'll, I'll tell him and I'll send him, I'll send him this video too, and he'll love you. Um, right. I'm going to uh, hook up with him and see what time he wants to do it, if the Lord wills. And I want to thank you for everything, bro. I want to thank you for talking to the people. I think that is private membership association, Dan. I think it's very important for the people to be able to talk to real people who go out and do the work. Um, You're one of those ones who got the death threats. You're one of those ones who had the people chasing after Epstein who come on my videos talking junk, coming after you, lying and attacking. You're one of the ones who kept fighting, helped people with their kids. You've helped people who actually end up involved in murder of our own friends, right? So you've really uh, done some good work, man. And I just want to thank you for all of it. I want to thank you for taking out the time and coming to talk to the people because they don't get a chance to hear the real big dogs who really doing it, dropping fire, being courageous and kicking butt every single day. And so I want to thank you for pulling me in under your wing, man, just like Josh did um, and some and some other people that's really strong, Crystal Nuttle and Ray Nuttle. Um, my own dad who put some fire inside of me and taught me how to be a beast. Um, I just I just want to thank everybody who who's done it. Jonah Bay, who uh, has opened the doors for me to do some stuff with him now, really helped me. Uh, wow, look at this. David Jose showed us common law actions, action government by common law rather than statutory, equitable, or civil law. You know how they try to tell you? Uh, CPS, that's civil. No, it ain't. Uh, CPS is statutory. I'm like, bro, is it criminal or civil? Uh, it's neither. It's quasi something. Uh, it, bro, what is going to be? Is it is it statute? What, what what the freak are y'all using, right? They never want to tell you. So it's funny. Just, bro, tell me, but, just tell me we're working out your union book and you're writing contracts <laughs> for me. Just tell me. Yeah, you, you ain't going to never show me the contract, but you done made it up and put it somewhere, right? You ain't going to never put right. it on the record, right? Yeah, okay, play. Right. right? Yeah, we got your contracts for you now, bro. Yeah, you know what they, I mean? Hey, we going to give it to you. <laughs> right, right. Right? Yeah. But cool, cool, bro. I thank you for coming on, man. I love the heck out of you. Please continue to keep fighting. Get some ice on you. And uh, make sure you got that thing tight. And uh, let us know how we can pray for you. If you need anything, let us know. We got you. And, uh, you know, continue to be an earth-shaking monster like you are. I appreciate you, David. You know that, brother. I love you, man. And, uh, hey, listen to what this man's got to say. I ain't, I ain't, you know, if you're watching, you already know. So just follow the procedure and you'll you be fine. You'll be fine. There you go. There you go. All right. All right, big bro. Number, love you, man. Number love for her, brother. We're going to do a rap right, song soon, all right? Yes, sir. Do the rap uh, song soon. Hanging with Robert right, Slavin, flowing, blowing it to the moon. <laughs> Freaking killing Ooh. me. Talking on the Apple like womp, iTunes. Womp, womp, womp. Getting so nasty. Womp, Freedom womp, my head. Womp, Make you womp. shine soon. Womp, womp. Here we go. I got the beat for you. Go there ahead. You go. Give, it to me. <laughs> Give it to me. Show. We are right, rocking. All right, bro. All right. Peace, Peace be with you, bro. All right. Peace.